Hello and welcome. My name's Marie and this is my yarn journey. Hope you're well today. You've got your project that you're working on and a drink uh, while I update you on what I've been doing in the past week with my uh, projects. Two whips to talk about today, although I have got uh, quite a few on the needles. I'm thinking next week I'll probably be doing a uh, whip roundup. Um, coming to the end of the year and yeah it would be nice to have some plans going forward I definitely don't think at this point there is going to be a Christmas day sweater uh, but hopefully that'll be in the plans next year sometime because I do like the looks of that one um, so last time you saw me was in what I knit in a week and there was two new cast-ons and they're the projects that I'm going to be mainly talking about today. But before I discuss them, just want to let you know what I'm wearing, which is the um, Cozy Classic Raglan by Jessie Made Designs. I did this with Drops Alpaca and a um, Alpaca Fluff from Mammy and Flory. Uh, there's a few issues with this sweater, and it is in a previous episode of the podcast if you want more details but quite enjoying wearing it today it's a nice change it's nice because what I will say though is it's not that cool in the UK today and it's about well where I live in the UK and it's about 12 12 degrees which is quite warm for this time of year being that it's the first of November and um although this is lovely and warm this sweater boy does the wind get through it <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. I hadn't put my coat on. I thought, well, I've got this this lovely woolly jumper on. I'll be fine. And I'm only jumping in and out of the car. But yeah, the wind definitely um, blows through it. Anyway, that was a bit of a side note. So the first project that I'm going to talk to you about is in my lovely... You've seen it before. It's my main project bag at the moment. And it's the from my creative garage. Absolutely love this bag. And absolutely adore the this yarn and this project this combination has been absolutely fantastic i do think that this cardigan this calm down cardigan by lily kate france is going to be a lot more drapey than um because the pattern is knit in 100 percent wool and this is in a yarn that it has a very high um alpaca content and i'll just tell you what that is so it's my favorite or one of my favorite dyers ayala yarn her yarns are beautiful and it's 70 percent alpaca 20 percent silk and 10 percent cashmere so it's very very drapey yarn and i don't think that the original um that the, the samples that Lily Kate knit were actually in such a drapey yarn, but I still think this is going to be a cosy, warm and lovely um, cardigan. Now, I've made a lot of progress. I think I'd only done one of the fronts and this, I'd just um, finished the second shoulder panel when you saw it last week and it loads on this last weekend. It was, yeah, I just couldn't get enough of it because the yarn is just so so enjoyable to knit with it's wonderful and this is how it's turning out so far it's very hard to hold up very hard to show you i've got my uh, coffee cup needle stoppers on there from um blue fern if i turn it round, you'll probably see how it's knitting up a bit better I have got two different dye lots, but I'm not worried about that. It's a tonal yarn. Um, some are lighter, some are darker, but I think it's going to look absolutely stunning. Construction of this was very, very interesting. I'm enjoying it. The only problem is the armholes look so, so deep. It's quite scary. Uh, I've not... Um, but it is supposed to be an oversized cosy garment but i've not tried it on yet yeah and it's it's been a a joy to knit um lily kate 
patterns are very, very detailed, which I enjoy. And they often have uh, really well thought through um, design elements and, um, yeah. It, and this has kept me engaged as well. At the moment, I'm just, um, I've just joined in the round. Not in the round, I'm saying in the round, but I've just joined under the arms and I'm now, I'm, obviously I'm knitting flat, which I don't mind a bit of um, flat knitting. I find it quite enjoyable. But yeah, yeah, I just wish you could feel this yarn because it's absolutely beautiful to knit with. And yeah, I've, I've knit on this loads. I had a lot of knitting time um, last weekend, so... That was good. But I've not worked on this for a few days now because I have been working on my other project and yeah, I've made really good progress on this. It's very hard to show you stage. So sorry about that. I'll show you the yarns again. I've got the Drops Brushed Alpaca. What number is that? Or colour? Colour number 17. I think it's called Lavender. So I'm using that. That was already in stash. How many books? And then um, I'm using the Drops Cotton Merino. Now I've got two balls left of both of them. So I should be fine with yarn because... I'm going to show you now if I can pick it up. Although when drops uh, cotton merino balls, it just seem to fall to bits when you get, you know, down to the last bit. Oh, look, I mean, and even sometimes throughout using knitting with them, they do do that. Okay, so I'm going to try my best here to hold this up and show you. There we go. Looks a bit funky at the back there. I had a problem where I did one row wrong and yeah, a bit funky, but we'll have that as the back and then nobody will see it. So this is what it is going to look like. Um, I'm a little bit concerned about this, but that is the construction. I've just never done that before. So basically with this from the bottom up and then you knit the sleeves bottom up as well and then you join it all together. So you cast off stitches at the underarm point on the body and then you put the body on hold. Then you knit your two little sleeve sections and when you get to the final row on the sleeves you also um, cast off stitches for the underarm and then you join it all back together. And when you do the joining back together that's when it changes from the rib to uh, stockinette. And so now I'm just working through the raglan decreases and then it'll just be the neckline and cast off and then I just need to sew in the ends and sort them underarms. So I don't think this is going to take me too much longer. I think I've got about 15 decrease rounds left to do. So approximately 30 rows before I get to the, um, to the neckline. It does look quite a loose gauge. I've not checked my gauge on the stockinette and it might be worth me doing that, but I haven't got my my tape next to me unfortunately. Obviously on the fisherman's rib I told you in last week's video that I was um it's 13 stitch gauge for that and I was at 14 and I think it's supposed to be 14 stitch gauge for the stockinette but you do use the same same needle. This yarn combination I'm really liking. It's really really soft. I know I've said I'm not really um I'm trying to do things without fluff really. It adds to the cost and 
none of the ones that I've knit um, have been a pleasure for me to wear. I found them quite prickly, to be honest. Um, but I think I'm definitely liking alpaca more. I can feel this a little bit around the neckline, but it is a high, very high neck. And I just wish sometimes the neck was slightly more open, but it, I suppose it does keep you warm. But this one, this brushed alpaca, seems very, very soft. And I think it's going to be nice to wear. So, yeah, that's where I'm up to so far. I'm hoping I'll have this finished this weekend. And then if I do, um, I'll try and get a little bit of footage of me using my new um, Struck It or whatever it's called, my new... Um, super luxe basket for us for blocking my nips in because uh, it'll be nice to show you properly because i know on the clip that i put on uh, last week's what i knit in a week video you couldn't really see it so i'll try and get something a bit better uh when i'm blocking this maybe i'll um do it in the bath upstairs and then you can then i can get a good video for you but yeah so it's going to be interesting sewing these underarms together and that, like I say this pattern for this top is literally two pages there's not very much detail and you they assume that you have quite a bit of uh, some knowledge anyway I know it's a basic pattern but being that it's a totally different construction than I've ever done before I was quite shocked really but what would you say is the best I've not done much i don't think i've done any have i done any seaming i don't think so not since i've got back into knitting years ago i did but my seaming wasn't that great so if anyone's got any suggestions of how i need to um sew this up so i could look at some videos just to make sure that i get a nice finish on it really but it's at the underarm point so it's not really going to show that much but i would like to um do it as good as I can really yeah it's a very very squishy fabric this I'm just wondering um hoping that it's not going to be see-through in the top section really but yeah I don't think it'll be much longer before that is finished and this one I am keeping in my um craft house magic bag which is one that I got I had a voucher that I used for that um for my birthday last year I think it only just fits in because it is quite a bulky bulky fabric okay the next thing that I want to go through is my ins and outs the first of November today so in October, I managed to finish two of my big garments, which is the porcelain sweater, which, by the way, I've worn that porcelain set sweater so, so much. The only thing is it needs depilling already, so it's pilled quite a lot. Let's hope that's just the first flurry of pill, but um, it's so nice to wear. The other thing I've become a little bit fingy of is the neckline stretching out, but it's just so comfortable and nice to wear. It's light. I like the sleeve length, although I've realised it's not super practical for getting my coat on and off. Uh, but for the actual wearability and, you know, cracking on with the day, as it were, it's great. And then, and I, and I love the colours of my porcelain as well so and then the salty days which yeah that was that appears to be a massive fail and i'm not really sure what to do about that at all maybe if i carry on with this exercise for another month and then try it on that might um be the way forward because <laughs> i might feel better about the fit then so the ins for the month it was my Kinross 4 ply which I bought just after Yarndale and my Patreon yarn which is 100 grams that's from Homespun House the drops that I got for my birthday 
got my Christmas Eve box from Green Loft West Green Green West West Green Loft Yarns. Oh, I can never remember that name. Um, and that was 120 grams. And sock yarn from Mona. And I think that's everything. Please correct me in the comments if I've forgotten anything because I know you guys um, often remember things better than me. Um, and that is 1,020 grams in total. And then for my outs, like I say, it was 1,135 grams and it was those two main two sweaters. I don't think I've finished anything else um, in October. And that meant overall... I was a minus of 115 grams, so just over one skein. <laughs> I really thought it was going to be more, but it's still a minus, and that's all that counts. What I do need to look at, and I haven't done at the moment, but I need to look at my um, Giddy Yarns uh, bingo card. I know I've not cast those slippers on yet, so that's something I do need to get done done shortly to get that square complete i have um got plans to hopefully knit up three gift hats which i think i've talked to you about and potentially another three but i don't know if that's been ambitious i don't i'm not anticipating at the moment other than socks casting on anything um other than those gifts and Going forward in the next few months, I do think that around the run up to Christmas, I want to try and get things finished and off the needles. But as I say, I'm probably going to be doing a whip roundup. And when I do that, I can discuss uh, future plans and what I am hoping to get done before Christmas. But yeah, I need to look at my giddy yarns goals and see um, how I'm up to with them with others only having a couple of months left now before the end of the year. I'm also thinking of doing another different video on the channel. Um, the Doing the exercise videos um, has really made me accountable and it's made me stick to it. Um, I've just completed, I think it's my seventh week now of um, doing the Chloe Ting routine. So that means for the last seven weeks, I've been working out five times a week. And that's crazy to me because, you know, I never thought I'd stick to it. And this is the first week that I've really felt that um, my strength, especially in my legs more than anything, is improving. And I'm noticing changes on my body, but I've not changed my diet. I'm noticing a little bit my fitness levels improving. And I'm just, I'm pretty pleased that I've stuck to it this long. I've got one week left on the... Um, weight loss program and then I will do an update I can't see I, I do need to continue with that you know it'd be easy to think oh I can't be bothered but no I need to carry on because I've made a really good start there and I've got past the difficult first stage and if I stop now it would be a shame so like I say I'm going to be and because that I've done so well with the accountability of that I'm thinking of doing another um, different type of video for my channel um, and that's a planning uh, I use good notes on my iPad for planning but I'm very on and off with it like with exercise but I do feel that um, I like to be organized I try my best and um, having things planned out like meal planning uh, planning out my month it just helps me clear my head and not be overthinking and in my head like we all we all do a lot so I've been very up and down with it this year I think it will help with organizing my YouTube content and um, 
also um, my nail content because I am a nail technician and um, I really need to be a lot more consistent with promoting my business. So I thought what I would do is um, do a little video of me planning out the month, show you what I use. I use a planner from Planning to Prosper, I think the name is. Um, it's fantastic. You're doing it all on your iPad, so it's easy to correct mistakes. Not like a because I used to have a written uh, diary, a paper diary. Sorry, and digital's fantastic. You can still use stickers. You can still do all that. You can still customize it all, but it just means that it's much easier to change. Um, and I don't always get around now, and I've been lacking these last few months of of um, getting it done before the month starts planning out my month and um, when I have it all there and it looks pretty and I've got my to-do list and I can tick things off as I go along I find I'm more productive um, and yeah so I want to get back on track with all that so I thought why not do it on here like I did with the fitness um, but if that's not your type of thing obviously skip that video I don't know when it'll be up on the channel. I'm hoping to do it at some point this weekend so we're not too far into November before I've done the planning. Uh, I have sat down this morning and um, done a little plan of um, a rough schedule for YouTube. So that's a start. Oh, uh, a couple more things to say to you today. Um, one of my gifts hadn't arrived in time for my birthday and um, it was a gift off my youngest son Ryan um, and he got me this it was something off my list and it's um, a little sock project bag beautiful Christmas design that's from the little grey girl I just thought I'd show you that and uh, last thing is I've finished another book so last week if you saw it was Legends and Lattes and um, this book is the one that I've just finished this week I read it in a few days it is um, from a bookshop in Ambleside we me and my partner have stayed in Ambleside a few times in a lovely hotel uh, very nice overlooking Windermere Lake uh, we love to go there and it's only about uh, just over an hour's drive away from home so not too far to go and we often go for a day out in Ambleside um, and have a walk round and they have a lovely bookshop there which I love going to and I got this from there and yeah it was great I enjoyed that I'm reading a lot of cozy easy reads at the moment but yeah it was really really enjoyable got that read in a couple of days while knitting on my I'm doing a lot of knitting and reading at the moment and I think that's everything I wanted to talk to you about so not really many projects to show you I've got no update on my sock at the moment although I'm hoping to crack on with that I keep saying that don't I I've actually got the craving to cast on um, a new pair of socks just the next along in my um, sock project book but really, I shouldn't be doing that, should I? I should be cracking up with what's on my needles. <laughs> well, you know, I've done well. I've done well recently, haven't I? <laughs> There's bound to be a bit of a flurry of cast-ons at some point, and I've just cast these two on, haven't I? <laughs> anyway, yeah, I'll stop waffling now. I'll let you get on with your day. I hope you've had some um, lovely crafting. Sorry if it seems to be a shorter episode, uh, but there wasn't really a lot to say. And last week was a bumper one, wasn't it, with what I knit in a week. Hopefully, though, there will be a couple of bonus um, videos up on the channel shortly. And that will um, make up for, <coughs> excuse me, make up for this shorter video. Have a lovely week. See you next time. Bye.